There was, there was, there was empires in Africa called Kush Timbuktu where every race came to get books For my success to you, even if you wish me the opposite Sooner or later we'll all see who the prophet is Welcome to Got Kush TV here, we're holding a med It's your Ank Doctor on the uh, GK TV UK's number one conscious platform This is where we hold uh, meditation reasoning with uh, specially selected guests who we feel can uh, help to impart information and information and also help to empower our community in relation to uh, some of what's happening in the world of current affairs and in the present at this time in the 21st century. My first guest with us here this uh, afternoon evening is somebody who as a youngster we've seen grown into an esteemed Pan-Africanist and uh, who definitely leads by example when it comes to a pan-african lifestyle so we're going to be holding a meds in all good things uh, pan-african and also as well uh, taking a look at current affairs with my good brother Tafadzwa Shakara and Bandaka. Bless up, bless up, bless looking up. very chilled and uh, relaxed. Well, the sun is shining and the black woman beautiful. So I've been enjoying the uh, yeah, quarantine convo convos. We're trying, been, uh, we're, trying. we're trying, we're trying, we're yeah, trying. It's and, been an uh, interesting one, you know. It has it's been, been very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been a long time since we uh, had a reasoning or held a reasoning or hold our meds together. Very yeah, true. This Saturday morning on Every the morning. Supreme it's Radio. Every morning, Saturday, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. so hopefully people will want to hear yes, sir, uh, yes, sir, exactly yes, sir. what we've got to say we'll in terms text. of uh, holding a meds. Definitely. Right? And I suppose Definitely. the first thing we should start on while we're having this uh, reasoning and meditation is the uh, current situation in regards to uh, Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and not only Black Lives Matter, the whole of the uh, political discourse, shall we say, at this present time in relation to uh, black people and black people's lives and also the offence that it has caused to uh, other races at this here present time. I know you want to touch on it from a Pan-Africanist because we did say a long time ago on the Radio Shacks that... Yes. Uh, Pan-Africanism or the whole uh, activism that we're into would mm -hmm. become fashionable. So be it in a 2020. Yeah, yeah. It, it has very much so. And I think um, I, I think we're seeing two things. I think it's, it's good in one sense that our people are willing to be engaged. At the same time, it, you, you see the, the deficiencies that come with uh, not being proactive in activism, if that makes sense, like in terms of being reactive, uh, waiting for something to happen before you're organising um, and then... That's an excellent point you made there yeah. because uh, sometimes we don't exercise what would be called emotional intelligence. Right, yeah? right, As you right. said, we do emotional right. reaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know you know what I'm saying? Kwame Touré um, calls it the difference between mobilisation and organisation. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to... Uh, these the, the the difference one is constant it's always in flow yeah the other um again as I said is reactionary and so in in it really and truly in order to make our protests and demonstrations m most effective we would have to be doing a lot of that work prior to the the and the event of the killing of a brother or a sister in police custody and i'm saying we should we're, it's like we're trying to create infrastructure to respond to an incident rather than um you know having something it, having in place, place already already to deal with a right? situation of somebody getting killed right. in custody right. or right. to deal with a situation right. where uh, other races feel threatened right. because we're making a protest right. so they decide to make a counter protest yeah you know what I'm saying so I think but the good thing is that when the people are engaged it presents opportunities for us to take it to that level do you see what I'm saying um, the, the, the major thing is that oftentimes you know and even being in on marches and demonstrations you realise the extent to which our community is not as informed as we probably should be about the issue, even just the issue of black lives in custody over here in this country. You know, you when you say names like Cherry Gross and uh, Cynthia Jarrett and Joe Gardner, uh, uh, Colin Roach, um, uh, Ed, 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 Roger Sylvester, Sylvester you know, Ed, Ed, Edson uh, De Costa, um, more recently, do you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, a brother called Simeon Francis was killed in police custody a couple of months ago uh, in Birmingham. And there's so many other names, yeah, in, in recent years. It's Smiley Culture, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Dimitri Fraser, you know, there's not, it's Sean Rigg, there's, there's, there's a lot of these names. So, uh, Reed. Reed, yeah, you know what 
know what I'm saying? You know, and, and these things. And so um, it, it's, it, it suggests to me that some of the lack of organisation may come from the lack of awareness around the issue itself. Do you see know what I'm saying? A lack of awareness with so much information available on social media, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. They say 70% of, of, of Nubian Mennonites in the world mm -hmm. use Facebook. Mm -hmm. I struggle to find how we still, in the information age, mm -hmm. getting a lack of information, Shaka. Because, in my humble opinion, uh -huh. we, we, I, I think the majority of us are not in activism. You see what I'm saying? So if 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 life is one is consumed by, um, you know, go to school, get good grades, get a good job, nine to five, look after the children, information that we come across will be, you know, relevant to those endeavors. You see what I'm saying? And at the same time, I feel I think that um, the information age has caught the activist community off guard, so to speak. Like we're, we're not as technologically savvy as we should be right. and not utilising it to its full potential. Right, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd agree with that. You know what I'm saying? To, to some degree. Um, and, I, and I think it's important now because from a propaganda perspective, we have more tools at our disposal. Um, and so we, we should be uh, utilising them to inform our community more about such issues. Do you know and what I'm saying? And the propaganda side of it, even though you use that term and some people will take it in maybe the wrong way, mm -hmm. it's very important in terms of African liberation because we here at Got Kush TV, mm -hmm. one of the uh, founding principles of our mission statement mm -hmm. was to be the media for African liberation mm -hmm. and we know the importance and that in this day and time, a lot of people not really comprehending that term liberation mm -hmm. and what liberation means. So could you just quickly <laughs> break that down and empower uh, uh, some of our listeners who, or watchers who may be uh, viewing this program. To paraphrase the definition that was given to me by my father, uh, Brother Leader Bandaka, he speaks of liberation being the process by which we acquire the power to be masters of our own destiny. Yeah. The process by, by which, which we, we acquire, acquire the, the power, power yes. to be masters of our own, of destiny. Our own des that means destiny. That means to define, defend, and develop ourselves according to our own cultural matrix. And that yeah? would make a lot of sense if we look at uh, Dr. Neely Fuller, the great Bibi Francis Chris Wilson, mm -hmm. who uh, left the black print or the blueprint of mm -hmm. Rail Cell Wet, whereby mm -hmm. they were explaining that mm -hmm. there are nine areas of in activity. society. Yeah of people activity mm -hmm. that we would have to control yes. in order to control yes. our destiny. And this ties yes. in uh, very nicely with your father's... Uh, definitely, that's definition, yeah. Definition it, it will have been partly inspired by the reading of Mama Francis Cress Wilson and Baba Nili Fuller, do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? The studying of, the, of their great works. So yeah, and, and the reason, the most important word though in that definition is power, yeah? And, and I think that we have to understand the dynamics of power because more often than not, a lot of our trajectory is looking acceptance, looking to be welcomed in. I was saying that the, the, the most important word in that definition is power, yeah? Um, Amos Wilson wrote the book Blueprint for Black Power. And um, oftentimes we're looking more for acceptance, yeah, to be assimilated into the system. And, and so when we're looking to be accepted by people, the power is still in their hands, the power of acceptance, the power um, of control, the power of what is and is not correct, right, good, is still in their hands, yeah? We give them that power every time we seek acceptance from them. We just want to be treated right within their system. Um, we're not demanding uh, that, 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 we're not demanding respect based upon power that we have. We're pleading for acceptance based upon the power that they have. And so, um, yeah, that, that's part of it. And you see that, you see that the dynamics of that play out very, very, uh, in real time, when with these situations that we're talking about in terms of anti-Semitism uh, at the minute, um, Nick Cannon and Wiley and everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I see people that are, there, there's, there's, a, there's a Twitter boycott going on at the moment because Twitter failed to take down the tweets of Wiley within 12 hours. Like, they're complaining that 12 hours later the thing was still up, yeah? And, and so people are boy, the, the tweets are taken down, but they, were, they, they weren't taken down even in a lot of space of time. Uh -huh. And so people are boycotting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's because the people that control this terminology, anti Semitism, have the power to command that. Interesting <laughs> way you have brought up uh, the uh, Nick Cannon scenario yes. and also as well the 
uh, Wiley scenario yes. and uh, emphasising the uh, power construct between the backlash that they've received because yes. some would say they exercise free speech which doesn't seem to be so uh, free no more. Mm -hmm. And in using that term as well, um, anti-Semitic, mm -hmm. it seems today that a lot of our people, if we speak out against the ills that are happening in the world from uh, certain communities, i.e. the uh, Israeli community, mm -hmm. so-called Jewish community, mm -hmm. uh, it's instantly flagged up as anti-Semitic. Now, mm -hmm. the definition of anti-Semitic is said to be uh, anything hostile to Jews or Jewish uh, culture or Jewish society. Mm -hmm. um, I have a problem with that in regards to when we take a look at that word Semitic. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. termed as anything hostile to the uh, nation or the state of Israel and their people mm -hmm. or to the uh, so-called Jewish community, Israel Jewish uh, culture. And uh, as I said, we would have a problem with uh, that particular construct that has come about. But it seems to have been hammered through the media, politics, into people's head mm -hmm. that should you voice any form of disapproval uh, against a Jewish person or the uh, Jewish people or Jewish culture, mm -hmm. yeah, even if what you're saying is truthful, mm -hmm. it's now deemed as uh, anti-Semite or um, being hostile. First and foremost, in looking at the situation with Nick Cannon and um, Wiley, mm -hmm. would you say they're being anti-Semitic? Um, um, no, I, I, I think that the definition of what anti-Semitic is has been defined in such a way that associating power with the people that are referred to as Jews is considered anti-Semitic. The, 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 um, the reasoning behind it is that uh, uh, apparently Hitler ascribed a certain level of power to the Jews in Germany as a justification for what he perpetrated against them, yeah, um, from my understanding. So when you say that Jews have power in any area of people activity, this is considered as a call to extermination, yeah, to genocide against so them. So it's considered hostile. Yeah, right, just to say them have power, yaso and lesso, yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, there, there, are, there are some areas where we can look at this um, and we, we will find that, some of the people that are in certain positions are in fact Jews, yeah? Um, and, and in many, um, in, in some of these instances, um, uh, uh, they're disproportionately to population, if that makes sense, yeah? Where, like we always talk about, we ourselves are often underrepresented, underrepresented, sorry, in positive statistics. Or at the high end of society. Right, just what I'm saying. And overrepresented. In negative statistics, in prison in and the them kind of thing. Right, just, just what I'm saying. Right. So we could, so some people have suggested, and I haven't done the independent research of this myself, that com in comparison to population size, it would appear that there's more Jews yeah, in certain areas of high society, right? You know what I'm saying? Whether that, whether that is or is not the case, the interesting thing about the Nick Cannon situation is he was actually trying to present an, a, a reasoning for why certain conversations that we have concerning bloodlines and Rothschilds and them kind of things there is actually not hate, yeah? He kept saying that. When you look at these things, you'll realise that it's not hate. If you look at, the, you know, the, the, the banking system and the money, yeah? Hate um, is a strong word. Remember, right. they don't use the word hate. They use the word yes. hostile. No, 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 right? I know. And I'm using his language, yeah. As I said, we're trying to come now right. from a uh, reasoning academic yes. viewpoint and yes. standpoint. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. So anything we're saying yes. is from a factual viewpoint, not yes. a racist. But yes. as I says, yes. even me just wording it as I've just worded it, yes. Yeah? Yes. I have to be careful where we tread because yes. someone's going to listen to this and say, mm -hmm. oh, they don't like Jewish people. That's no. not the case. No, yeah, yeah? And th and definitely. I, I, but my point being is yes. you hate, but... They've softened it to just hostile, so we don't even... It doesn't even matter, matter. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hostility. It does, I take your point, point take your point exactly very well. Um, and yeah, um, so just hostility, 
can be responded to in a certain kind of way. And I, I do take your point. Said, was it being hostile, really? Not uh, at all, in fact. Um, he, he said more, uh, let's say, provocative things about white people in general uh -huh. than just at Jews. Do you see what I'm saying? The interesting thing where Wiley's concerned is that Wiley was actually, uh, in, uh, seemed to be challenging how the, the, the community of Jews that operate in the music industry by his understanding have exploited the talent of young black people yeah and so he's actually talking about a situation of discrimination and is being called called out for discriminating against people I, that's what I, I i i've asked the question i said for wiley to have done what he did mm -hmm. in such a vocal manner mm -hmm. and also he emphasized mm -hmm. see people were just uh listening to the backlash or the aftermath, mm -hmm. the reaction, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, what he said was what that, is it? Yeah. etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you actually hear what he's saying, mm -hmm. he's complaining about the economics, mm -hmm. he's complaining about the finances. That's what he's talking yeah? about, yeah. He's, he's saying, follow the money, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, the word on the street, mm -hmm. he's, he's not happy with the split, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? He feels he's been ripped off along the way. Mm -hmm. That is the word on the street mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. about now. Mm -hmm. Let's put it out there mm -hmm. for those who don't know, mm -hmm. yeah? But mm -hmm. it's interesting, as you said, when you're talking about the power mm -hmm. that... Uh, the term anti-Semitic has yes. and has been given by politics and by the media mm -hmm. when, as, like, Wiley, you voice a complaint about a personal experience that you're going through mm -hmm. in your business life which affects your finances mm -hmm. or your Nick Cannon trying to bring across a historical narrative, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Either or either way, it's a no-no. To me... The, the 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 major thing though that I think concerned them where Wiley was concerned is the statement that he made about Israel and Israel not being their land, yeah. And the reason why I say that is because um, if when we put all of these things together in the last five years, um, Jeremy Corbyn has become a prominent political figure, and he has been embraced by the Graham generation. There, there was a hashtag in the last two elections. That's it, grime for, for Corbyn. Corbyn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, JME sat down and met with him publicly. Um, he he went to Glastonbury, and I believe at Glastonbury, uh, Stormzy endorsed, em, endorsed him. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Akala, who doesn't vote, wrote a whole article in the Guardian newspaper about why he's going to be voting for Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn was uh, done for anti-Semitism. And this is a man who's been known for anti-racist protests yeah. since the 70s. There's, yeah. In fact, there's no MP in the yeah. House of Commons. Yeah. That protest is more right. with the people, for the people, or has helped the yeah. Jewish cause more in mo modern times and as well as a, the apartheid cause yes. than Jeremy Corbyn, if you look at his record. But he's not pro-Israel, yeah? So the reason why he's done for anti-Semitism is because he's challenged the state of Israel. So now, when you've got Grime for Corbyn, and you've got the godfather of Grime coming out and saying, well, boy, you see that land is not yours, yeah? And we know this is a contentious issue, yeah? So all the other stuff that he said, uh, in my estimation, I think was irrelevant to the reaction, right? I think that was the key thing. They don't want a younger generation of black people to be politicized around the issue of Palestine and Israel in the way that a lot of their parents and grandparents were because the Pan-African movement in this country, I can speak to this, have been politicized around the issue for, for, for decades. Like I, we recall um, uh, that, that all African People's Revolutionary Party regularly featuring members of the, of the Pan-African, sorry, the Palestinian Liberation Organization at the African Liberation Day. There were other sides of the Pan-African movement that banned that. They was like, well, why are we giving them platform? They don't give us platform. Not to say that, but, but even those Pan-Africanists were critical of, the, of the, how the state of Israel came into being and, and, and the discrimination um, uh, and the murder that was committed against uh, a, another group of people. And so to me, all the other stuff is social media hype because it's harmless to it's nothing that Wiley says is going to have a, a definitive impact yeah upon the, the Jewish community in this country yeah it's not and they know this but politicizing or making the, a younger generation aware of a, a global more aware of a global political issue 
can cause serious problems. And that's what we're seeing, especially with the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, the whole scenario with uh, George Floyd, the protests. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing a uh, new generation mm -hmm. being politicised at this here mm -hmm. present time. Mm -hmm. And it's now starting yeah. to uh, delve and research mm -hmm. and look into mm -hmm. uh, race and look into culture mm -hmm. and look further than maybe they would have looked mm -hmm. beforehand mm -hmm. and seen a consistent pattern mm -hmm. of uh, Nubian Mennonites or African people, mm -hmm. African or Caribbean people mm -hmm. or African American people mm -hmm. or African South American, African Latinos as they like to, I don't like that term neither, yeah. who have been consistently persecuted by the imperialism mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. of uh, the uh, Caucasian, the Arabs, mm -hmm. The Jews, mm -hmm. yeah, they were all involved yeah. within the uh, slave trade, hence oh, yeah. our call in the 21st century yes. for reparations from all of them, yes. not from any specific group. Exactly. Yeah? Payment is due from all of it them. Is, and this is the point, here. this is the point, and I think from a Pan-African perspective, that we don't, like, we are concerned with white supremacy and white power, yeah? We only refer to the different segments of it because they, you know, there are distinct groups of European people. Mm -hmm. But as and where, like, so if I wrote a book about the British uh, role in the transatlantic trafficking of enslaved Africans, yeah, um, it doesn't mean that the that the Spanish were involved or the French were involved or the Portuguese were involved. But this is about the British role, yeah. And so we can do that if all other groups. But when we get to the Jews, it's a problem. Tony Martin, Louis Farrakhan, like, they've all written books and been totally ushered. Professor Tony Martin, uh, an academic, and uh, Louis Farrakhan, they won't let into the, the country. The, the leader of the Nation of Islam. Because of the books that they have written in relation to the Jewish involvement yes. in the slave trade, right. yeah, mm -hmm. which, for some reason, they do not want the world to know. And, and their contribution to the African Holocaust. Exactly. Uh, uh, but again, the, well, we know the reason for that is that you, you cannot present to the world as the moral high ground when you have that history and the failure to have uh, proper repair, the damage from that history, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, and but, but the Pan-African community and the activists and the scholars have, have not targeted the Jews specifically. The, the role of the Anglican church, the, the Catholic church, um, and all the, all the churches, the roles of every nation. The synagogues. Right, the most, all of them. All the but but we've, we've highlighted all of it, uh -huh. yeah? And so, but what they try to present as though is that uh, the, the, the Jewish community has come under a specific kind of targeted attack from these Pan-African scholars. However, you know the wickedest thing? Um, that battle even began before that, um, that book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, came out. Because it was the American scholastic community that began to attack the African Center Scholarship Movement. Yes. The John Henry Clarks of this yes. world, the, the Dr. Benz of the country, Cannon, right? They tried to shake Anchor Diop right. because we were now writing about our, I'm giving our narrative, right. it shook the whole right. uh, Caucasian academia. Right. right. My and, and, great and, point, great and, and so it began before that. A lot of the, the, more, the most prominent scholars that attacked the, um, the African Center Scholars in some of the most racist ways were people like Mary Lefkowitz um, and others of the Jewish community. They were not exclusively Jews, however, but they were a part of that process. Then now we have to look at the fact that um, the, the relationship between Israel and the, 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 the wicked apartheid government in South Africa, f who by many estimations were funded and armed with the assistance of Israel. Uh, there, some suggest and directly say that it would not have been possible for the, the white racist regime in South Africa between uh, 1948, I believe it is, and 1990 to have acquired and developed nuclear arsenal had it not been for the assistance of Israel. So, um, and the, the role of, of the Jewish community in uh, South Africa in relation to, and their relationship with the apartheid regime, yeah? So the whole point is that we as a community, yeah, have a long history of discrimination in the sense of the fact that the Jewish community has been a part of the white supremacist axis in as much as uh, the French have, 
the Anglo Saxons. Sorry, let, me, let, me, let me break Some it down. Some would say that's war. war. That's very controversial. What you said there. Uh, it's a fact. Up. But if we say so, let's to make the point. Yeah, uh-huh. let's break it down. Yeah, let, if I said the Anglo Saxons have been perpetrators of discrimination and genocide against African people, that's not a lie. The Normans that's have been right, perpetrators, right? If I say that the, all sections of the Germanic peoples, yeah, that's not a lie. Um, if I say the Romans have that's been not a lie. right, that's a, so. Why, if I say the Jews, mm-hmm. does that become a problem? You, you, you see what I'm saying? Because it's the fact. Yeah? The, the East uh, India, the Dutch East India Company, which is one of the biggest companies that were involved in, 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 in the, in the transatlantic, yeah? Mapping. Right? Of Afri- yeah. African people. Mm-hmm. Mem- members of all the, the Dutch, the, the British, they were involved in it. Yeah? And so were the Jews. This is a fact. You, you see what I'm saying? Right? So, um, and, and this is the problem. So, and, and because there's a moral high ground and two, a paternalistic relationship as though they like, they like to, uh, to, to give this impression as though they have been uh, these allies of, of black people that, you know, as though without them, we wouldn't have made some of the, the gains that we've made. The impression they you know seem to want to give is that they are uh, some chosen people of uh, Well, that's their religion. God. And this is the, 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 the religious construct uh, maybe is why the world uh, gives them the empathy that they are given in relation to their their holocaust and the african holocaust you mm-hmm. have to say that juxtaposition mm-hmm. is not balanced mm-hmm. because the way the world treats the uh, jewish holocaust mm-hmm. and the way the world treats the african holocaust which mm-hmm. is still ongoing today mm-hmm. you know, this, uh, but if we take a look at what's happening mm-hmm. in places like yemen mm-hmm. in places like libya mm-hmm. in places um, like Congo mm-hmm. today, yeah, where we still see them after, we still see the African Holocaust continuing mm-hmm. and it's still perpetrated by white supremacy for the resources and for the human resources, mm-hmm. then we have to uh, agree with your reasoning and your meditation in that what we are saying is factual. Mm-hmm. And especially when it comes to that term of uh, Semitism mm-hmm. or anti Semitism. Mm-hmm. The other day, uh, in fact, uh, during the protests in regarding Black Lives Matter and the statues, mm-hmm. they attacked um, Emperor Hal Selassie's uh, try. I don't know if it was a retaliation because they lost the Battle of Trafalgar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they went for uh, Hal Selassie's <laughs> statue. In, and yeah. I put it up on my Facebook. This is an anti-Semitic attack. It's a good point. It's a good point. It's funny that anti-Semitism doesn't apply to the better Israel. In Ethiopia. Say that again. The better is like here. Because yes. let's be clear here. There are some falashes from Ethiopia. Yes. Who have also made that pilgrimage yes. to uh, Yes. The These are people that are. Israel. And they're, they're universally accepted as, as part as of the, the Jewish community. And, yes. and not just universally accepted through their bloodline. Yes. Which has been tested. Yes. The DNA and the mitochondria DNA. Yes. Going back to being the original tribe of a Yehuda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was never mm-hmm. any Judah, because mm-hmm. there's no J in the English language before the mm-hmm. 15th century. What do you say? Mm-hmm. Look, I said there's no J in the English <laughs> language before the 15th century. Check that out. Yes, yeah? sir. So it would be Yehuda. Yes, sir. Yeah? And as you said, Beta Israel, or the Falasha mm-hmm. tribes mm-hmm. Uh, of Ethiopia, mm-hmm. would also constitute being under that. That, that umbrella of anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. If you were to attack their mm-hmm. heritage and culture, you can't mm-hmm. get a bigger attack on the heritage and the culture of Ethiopia mm-hmm. than the attack on uh, oh, Emperor yes, Selassie, mm-hmm. Baba Emperor Hal mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. statue. Yes, sir. So, as I says, the juxtaposition of that at this present time, mm-hmm. the scales of my art definitely are not balanced, especially <laughs> when we look at uh, Semitic and. We see, in fact, if we was to take a look at the Britannia Encyclopedia, because I don't want to say people to say we're being hostile. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We here at Gokush TV, we like to deal with my art and give everybody a fair hearing. Yes, sir. So when we take a look at um, Semitic, especially Semitic languages, it includes Amharic, yes. it includes Giz, yes. it includes. Uh, let's have a look here. Bear with me. Do remember as well to. Uh, Check out 6th of September, Women of Power, yeah? It's going to be a great seminar featuring uh, some of our divine feminine sisters out here in the 21st century who is going on 
really well in terms of political discourse and empowering a whole new uh, generation. Dr. Arikana Chimboa Kuo, uh, Esther Stanford Zosa, who's the other young lady? And uh, Sister Afiong, El Afiong. Yeah, Sister El Afiong, yeah. So as I said, when we take a look at the uh, Semitic languages, and I always have to do this, especially as the Ant Doctor, when we're looking at the reasoning, and we're uh, taking uh, meds from a scholarly point of view as to say that we're addressing the facts, not being hostile to anyone. The most widely spoken Semitic languages today, Amharic, 65 million people. Mm -hmm. Tigriya, mm -hmm. 7 million people. Mm -hmm. eh? Arabic, 300 million people. Mm -hmm. All of these languages are spoken by Ethiopia, are they not, uh, Shaka? Certainly. And, and uh, even, but even the Arabs are... Are, are Semitic peoples. And, but the term anti-Semitism doesn't apply to them. Uh, then <laughs> after Arabic, Amharic and Tigrina, mm -hmm. then you would now have Hebrew, 5 million, and uh, Amharic or Aramic Hebrew, which mm -hmm. is 575,000 to 1 million. But the point that we're taking or we're trying to make or elaborate here in this meditation is that when you actually use that definition of Semitic, you're talking about the languages and the culture of Africa and Asia. Asia. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you was to look up uh, Semitic in the Britannia, it says um, African Asiatic people. Yeah, Afro-Asiatic. So mm -hmm. how is anti-Semitic? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't that be anti-Africa mm -hmm. Asiatic peoples? It, it, it might appear so, but again, this is where we come back to the power of definition, yeah? Uh -huh. Because they've used this terminology and they've specified a particular discrimination that is specific to them. And so if you use it in any other context, it is considered, it is, it is in fact considered anti-Semitic. I, I saw a, a conversation once where the, the, the use of the term Holocaust, yeah, which is an English word, yeah? Mm. The use of the term Holocaust as applied to any other injustice done to humanity is considered anti-semitic that makes sense yes. yeah so in in the 90s when people were using the term black holocaust this is this was considered an insult yeah to the jewish community the black holocaust referring to the kidnapping the invasion the enslavement um, and the colonization of african african people and the yeah? neocolonization and the neocolonization still right today. most definitely yeah now the the, the the one of the lessons that we learn from this though mama marimba ani began a process whereby she said, we need our own term to refer to that period of our history and we should use terms in our own language. And so she put forward the term Ma'afa, yes, which means great disaster in Swahili, um, specifically to refer to our experience because slavery is a vague term. Holocaust is a term that has been used by the Jewish community and it is considered to be specific for them. Yeah. And so she's saying that we need specific terms for ourselves. So a lot of people use the term Ma'afa Develop upon that, um, some people use the term ma'angamizi, yeah, um, to refer to it because in the same Swahili, um, ma'angamizi has a, a similar meaning. However, it speaks to intentionality in the, in a way that ma'afa may not, yeah. So it, this is so. In in other words, uh, how I've understood it, uh, ma'afa could mean in in the language could be a storm or an earthquake, whereas ma'angamizi would more specifically relate to injustice done by a group of people against another group of people. Do you see what I'm saying? So both terms are used, yeah? But then we have concepts like anti-African, uh, anti-blackness, Afrophobia, yes? Um, which, which refer to a specific set of ideas that are used to discriminate and, and condemn and subjugate and commit acts of genocide against African people. And so we have to be uh, assertive enough to use these terminologies and flag up that reality. Just what I'm saying? Uh, because the, 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 um, this is all predicated on the fact that the, the identity of the people that we're referring to has been put forward to the world and the world has been called upon to be considerate and sensitive to the suffering yeah, of, of these people in a way that the world is not sensitive to the suffering of African people. And the people that we are called upon to be sensitive about are not sensitive to our to our suffering. Great point you've made there, especially when you talk about the sensitivity, the suffering in the African Holocaust, and you take a look at it today mm -hmm. with the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. which 
I often say to people, the Black Lives Matter movement has come along to try and control mm -hmm. the African liberation movement, which is taking life, the mm -hmm. awakening, because the biggest thing that the system feared is what's happened at this present, the mass awakening mm -hmm. of Nubian Mennonites, of Africans, of Caribbeans, which we see happening mm -hmm. daily, mm -hmm. yeah, by the uh, hour, minute and second mm -hmm. across the world, mm -hmm. the awakening that is taking place mm -hmm of uh, African Caribbeans. And with this, we've seen a whole new generation mm -hmm. start to embrace uh, African liberation, Pan-Africanism, mm -hmm. start to embrace uh, activism. And uh, I see that the younger people are ready now to take up this baton, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And to, as Baba Bob Marley say, get up, stand up mm -hmm. uh, for our rights. Mm -hmm. And it's as if the... Uh, Older generation mm -hmm. are holding back the younger generation instead of empowering them mm -hmm. and navigating them through mm -hmm. the maze mm -hmm. that is Babylon's mm -hmm. uh, system at this present time. Mm -hmm. How do you feel in regards to all your years of being in Pan-Africanism, I mean, you was born into it, mm -hmm. and what you see now in regards to the use? You mentioned earlier on about the grime artists, and now they all speak from, from okay, you mentioned Wiley, mm -hmm. yeah, Stormzy, um, Akala. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, bait mate, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many, uh, mm -hmm. respect fire bingy, mm -hmm. so many uh, young artists mm -hmm. who I've seen to uh, taken hold of this consciousness, mm -hmm. yeah, and are using their platform mm -hmm. more so than the uh, older African Caribbean celebrities. Mm -hmm. How can we bridge that disconnect, uh, Shaka, and get organized? So, as you say, we are preempting and ready to roll instead of reacting mm -hmm. and we have so much emotional discourse yet not much emotional intelligence if that makes sense i think um there's a lot there yeah no yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I i i i think in this day and age media is extremely important this is one of the reasons why i got crush tv is important uh -huh. I, I feel like we are we live in the, the digital age where currency Sorry, ideas are the primary currency of power. Knowledge is the new currency. As we, well, it wasn't, right. It's not new, but as we say... I, I even go beyond knowledge. It's ideas. The, the reason why I say ideas, it's not that they're not related, uh -huh. but knowledge, people tend to associate ide knowledge with information. Yes. Ideas is when we begin to get creative with the knowledge. Yes. Yeah, we're producing stuff out of it. We're producing concepts, paradigms, mm -hmm. and them kind of things there. Yeah? And, 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 and also, because an idea doesn't need to necessarily contain knowledge for it to be effective, if that makes sense. What I mean is, Explain. it doesn't necessarily need to, need to be based upon truth. You know what I'm saying? You can have an idea based upon a lie yes. and control people with it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's so, what I mean today in the world. Basically, <laughs> right? Just, you see what I'm saying? Right? So, so in, in that respect, I think we have a responsibility to connect with our people on a, on a very rolled and basic street level, but also to magnify that, um, that work through media, social media and, and all forms of popular media for the sake of politicizing our people. Because um, when, when, when we become politicized, our emotive reactions become more balanced with more reason, with more understanding of the system and the nature of the system and, you know, how things really I got, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and these kinds of things. And so, and, and, and in that context, you cannot talk about that history without talking about our resistance and the studying of our movements, yeah? Um, and how we effectively challenged the state. That's one of the reasons why it's very important for us to know history because a lot of the times, uh, the next generation is acting without the benefit of the, the lessons or, and the, yeah, from the previous correct. generation. Just, you see what I'm saying? It does repeat itself. So. It, you see what I'm saying? And mm. so, so we're going to repeat mistakes just because we don't know, yeah? Every black youth in this country should know what happened in Broadwater Farm 1985. Everybody, yeah? Um, there's, a, there's a good documentary by Brother Melanick Shabazz called... Uh, in no, no, no. It's, 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 it's one of his lesser known ones. Called, it's not called The People's Voice, The People's Account, yeah? Mm -hmm. You can watch it on Vimeo, yeah? But it's about Broadwater Farm, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, but I'm saying, like, and the reason why that's important is because understanding Broadwater Farm, all the uprisings, but Broadwater Farm was the last most significant one before 2011, mm -hmm. yeah? There's a direct relationship between Broadwater Farm in 1985 and what mushrooms into the 90s in terms of gun crime and knife crime, yeah? In terms of, 
how crack cocaine and heroin began to info into the, into our into our community. Ladbroke, right? Brixton, Tottenham, right? Hackney, and this was There's a direct a, consequence, you're correct. It's a direct relationship. The what happened at Boardwater Farm, but as you said, not just Boardwater Farm, Brixton, Bristol, mm -hmm. Birmingham, mm -hmm. Handsworth, Liverpool, Toxteth. Liverpool, mm -hmm. Toxteth, mm -hmm. yeah. The consequence of that was, right. as happened in uh, USA, coincidentally, there's no such Same thing. coincidence, yep. in LA and New York, an mm -hmm. infestation mm -hmm. of a new drug mm -hmm. that they called crack. As happened in Jamaica in the 1970s, yeah? So my, my point is that every black youth yeah, because mm -hmm. we're all all of our music mm -hmm. narrates on this road life, and the music is very important in the liberation, definitely or African liberation in our definitely freedom, in our in definitely. our desire to control definitely our definitely our yeah destiny. most deaf. And so, to the extent to which our music narrates and represents road, mm -hmm. our people should be knowledgeable about how road was created. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm saying. What happens when our narrations of road life are fortified with a knowledge of Broadwater Farm and the fact that it was on lockdown for weeks, yeah? And the fact that the black community had to be smuggling water and bread, yeah, onto the estate, yeah? Why do I know? Because my dad was one of the people that was smuggling water and bread onto the estate. Uh, I could tell you right? uh, so many you know things saying? about that. But I'm they, sure you can. As they say. When I read that down, man, is it? <laughs> <You get it? laughs> oh, wow. We can tell you a few things. Yeah, uh, you know what I'm saying? In regards right? to what went down. But, I can, but one of the things that I know that my parents told me mm -hmm. was that there was a serious, serious um, concern about ganja drought. Suddenly... Nobody can find the ganja again, yeah? But then there's these next things that are coming about on the estate. Well, go on. And if you know anything about Tottenham, need I say more? It was yeah? based for, as you say, man, a ganja farmer. Right. Call me the ganja planter. But then that changed <laughs> in 1985. That's correct. Broadwater Farm That's became correct. something different, yeah? yeah? It became a bit of based on something different. So mm -hmm. what happened there, yeah? But we know that the, the police in Hackney were running the thing, yeah? Operation Jackpot. They were, they were running Stoke the thing. Stoke Newton Police Station. Stoke Newton Police Station. Had their dealers out on the street. Exactly. Which is no different today uh, when you look at the uh, county line. Yeah, let's touch on this. When we look at the uh, county lines today. Yes. And the emphasis of gangs. Yes, yes, is yes. Is placed strictly and firmly at the feet and doorstep yes. of uh, young black males yes. from um, seven years old yes. right through to 40. Yes. Yeah, let's be real here. Yes. All yes. right. As they say, the man them, yes. Yeah. Yes. Which originally came from the Tottenham man them. Yes. Yet those county lines, similarly to how the crack suppliers mm -hmm. were supplied mm -hmm. by a government chain, mm -hmm. Those suppliers, when we actually take a look at the ewes out there on the road, mm -hmm. they are the infantry. You mm -hmm. know the infantry and the soldiers? The mm -hmm. infantry is who you send into battle mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. then get killed off first. Mm -hmm. You don't send in the uh, mm -hmm. commandos or the uh, officers or the generals. You mm -hmm. send in the, the infantry. You, know, you stay bad, they say, if you stay mm -hmm. there. Got, I've got to know this from security. Mm -hmm. you talk, oh, he was in the infantry, mate. You were, do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. even that, there's a class system within the army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah? And that's what I like in the, the road. As much as they want to floss in mm -hmm. whatever cars, BMW, Mercedes, Volvo, mm -hmm. Golf, whatever they want to floss in, mm -hmm. as much as they want to make out, because uh, they've got the latest uh, gears on or designer gears uh, that they're going on with things, in terms of the food scale, they're, they're right down at the lower end of the, the car. Oh, most of, most true here. There's no uh, a number of reports I put out on social media the other day in regards to uh albanian gangs mm -hmm. uh irish gangs mm -hmm. russian gangs mm -hmm. bulgarian gangs mm -hmm. where the road is gonna go through a big change in the next 10 years mm -hmm. whereby our road uh people mm -hmm. nubian Melanites, but are getting more politicized mm -hmm. and getting more involved in activism mm -hmm. you're seeing their place uh taken yeah mm -hmm. by the new 
uh, uh, ethnic minorities, Caucasian ethnic minorities from Eastern Europe coming in, mm -hmm. who are now taking up that role, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. as the uh, road man. So I think that's a great thing in terms of how the road is changing, mm -hmm. and I use a politicised looking to move from that life and about that life. But the point I really want to make is how we don't see the role mm -hmm. played by other races who are often the kingpins. Definitely. Yeah, in the uh, whole discussion about gangs and road Most life at the present time. I heard recently, and I, I can't, I'm sketchy on the details, but one big drug bust did happen one day uh, um, with some higher level gangsters. Yeah, yeah. Some, but I can't, I'm not, I'm not. Serious, uh, organized crime yeah. squad. Yes, yeah. Or soccer as they call them. Yeah. You're right, they, they, they snatched, I think it was about 50, right. 50 odd mil for some man in Forest Gate. Something, yeah. I heard, yeah. A, I remember the 50 but, odd mil. No, it's 50, yeah. no, sorry, it's 50 odd mil yeah. in total. Yes. But it was split. In, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man in Forest Gate got a yeah. six mil, an right. X man over here. Got, got, got yeah, five something mil, on the, well, yeah. An X man over here yeah, got yeah, a yeah. 10 mil. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? So that, that happens every now and then. Um, but you're right. I think that the, 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 mo the more most of the focus is on the youth, them on the road, and then the other the other side of it now is that they begin to create law because uh, around legitimate political issues, yeah. but attaching it to um, to other issues. So what they did was in 2015 attach uh, the county lines to sex trafficking to create a new law called the uh, uh, against. Um, Modern day slavery, the yes. modern day slavery act. Yes. Yeah. So if you're on the road and you're doing this county lines thing, and you, uh, as we used to say back in the day, uh, get to Joey or mm -hmm. to get to go for, mm -hmm. and you put them in a position, mm -hmm. you can not only be done with intent to supply, you mm -hmm. can now be done with, as you say, in slavery. And and they attach the image of the black man, man to that. To that, right? So now what role the, reversal in twenty? Did you see what I'm saying? Right. So now we become the perpetrators of slavery, slavery against our yeah, own. Yeah. Rather, you know what I'm saying? So, but they're not talking about the child sacrifice, like Madeleine McCann. All them all, kind of stuff there, right? The, um, what what's the the one the big one the 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 Franklin Marshall? In fact, as we're talking about that, the biggest case yeah. in regards to child abuse, uh, Shirley Oaks, Croydon, right, 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 right yeah? yeah, and that links. Yeah. Yeah. Into the whole yeah 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 yeah, yeah. well yeah I, yeah yeah I've, why, Buckingham what, Palace where have named it all of them guilty um, it seems like all them all what's the, what's the other one the one we're dead um, which one Edward Heath no 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 which one uh, Sav Savile 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 yeah you, you know see what I'm saying who he was rolling with. Yeah, yeah. He had the keys to the palace. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know what I'm but saying? all of these things... So, yeah, all, you know what I'm saying? So, it, it's that. Now, this is this is not to downplay the seriousness yes, yeah, of, of, of yeah. an issue like county sure. lines, yeah? Or it's child a, abuse. Or, 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 or sex trafficking. Yeah. No, we're not... We're not been not at any. all. Yeah, but but I'm saying that you can take... The system as we know it, it um, they're masters at taking legitimate issues and creating political capital out of it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to disempower the masses, especially of African people. So uh, and that's the only reason why I'm raising that, to say you have to, we have to look at not just the issue itself, but how the systems of society, the institutes of society are using that issue. Because sometimes um, they use the issue it's like there's a serious issue of, of violence in our in our community, but then they create an opposite operation trident to criminalize a whole generation of, of, of black youth. Or they saying? just use that term black on black when most of As the a media play. Uh, murders, yeah. rapes, mm -hmm. serial killers mm -hmm. that we see mm -hmm. por portrayed in mm -hmm. the media mm -hmm. are not black mm -hmm. folk or yeah. young mm -hmm. uh, black youths. Definitely, that definitely. We see. So uh, definitely. in terms of pan-Africanism, mm -hmm. Uh, moving forward yes. in the 21st century, yes. yeah, uh, 2020 has been, some would say, a uh, massive eye-opening year for uh, many. Mm -hmm. How do you see the uh, Pan-African struggle and the African liberation struggle moving forward? Being as you seem to have all these new recruits now because of uh, Black Lives Matter. I'm not sure if we've got new recruits <laughs> to the Pan-African liberation. Well, fight. everybody seems to have an opinion Fruit. now about... Uh, Racism, everybody. No, have definitely. A, an opinion on. Uh, there's, I say, potential. But there's still a disconnect between, yeah. as you said, those of us who want to toe the line and do as the system says. Yeah. Rightly so. There's nothing. You got your family to yeah. look after, etc. Yeah. And those of us who say, you know what, bun Babylon, but yeah. we want our payment first, and then yeah. we come out. I, I think what we what, bringing it from our previous conversation, we've got we've got uh, in the consciousness of our people connect the road, yeah. In London, to the township in South Africa, also. to the favela 
in Brazil. The garrison in Kingston. To, to the garrison in Kingston. And the garrison in Trinidad. Right? You know what I'm saying? In Trinidad to the, to the place where 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 the, the Aboriginals have been uh left to 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 to, to, to squalor mm -hmm. in um Australia. Yeah. And, and wherever New we go Zealand. across the world we have the same issues and problems. Have right? the same White issues, supremacy. right? To the Wagwan in Papua New Guinea, yeah, mm -hmm. and well and said. right, just what I'm saying, and I'm saying like there's a, because there is a relationship, like the road, because what creates the road life, is the result of international politics. There's no doubt about that, and international economics, yeah, and so it's about raising that awareness, um, and and connecting up the dots in that kind of way, so that we develop a global perspective. One of the things that in in um the when Amawale Malcolm X was starting the organization of Afro-American unity, within the, the charter, the aims and objective, they speak about the fact that in order to keep us locked yeah, in a particular me me mentality, uh, the, 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 whoever's running our government, the, the oppressor, uh, has to confine our mind to the four corners of whatever country that we're in. Just, just what I'm saying? And, and in a sense, you, you relate that to where we are. Like, you've got to confine your mind to your, to your ends. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, your borough. You control the circumference right? of a man's mind. You control the diameter of his thinking. So everything takes place within that and we're unable to think beyond it. Yeah. And because we're unable to think beyond it, we're not able to alleviate a condition that doesn't begin where we are. Mm -hmm. it, be it begins elsewhere, right? So for me, um, that's, that's our challenge right now, yeah? Um, to develop that that international perspective on our everyday lives, yeah? Um, because this world is not run just by what happens in London. Like all of this stuff that we have, electricity um, and, and, these, and the technology that we, that we have in it, it wouldn't be possible if there was not international trade relationships that start with the exploitation of minerals in places like the Congo. You see what I'm saying? We have to know that, yeah? Um, we have to know that the guns that we see on our streets are manufactured in Israel and, and, and Britain and America. Russia. And you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and all these places and how they get, yeah? You know, um, to, 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 you know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's, that's, that's a very serious challenge because that's the only way that it becomes real. I often hear our people say like, uh, we've got to get the guns out of the youth. Got, I don't actually agree with that, especially in America right about now. Oh, hell because no. of the uh, the way I see white supremacism is going. Yeah, I love what Grandmaster Jay is representing <laughs> at this here present time. Yeah, man. Yeah. When we take in it... Terms of, and as I said, it's not about not arming our youth, you know. It's about getting them to use the arms properly. Definitely. Yeah? It's about getting them militarised and uh, knowing how to defend themselves and their family with not just their hands, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, but also with weapons because people seem to have this airy fairy ideology that we're going to go into a fight and everybody's going to say okay put up your dukes you yeah. know what I mean no, nobody's not going to be uh, no self-defense is important or, and self-defense for me self-defense is a, sorry a part of self-defense yes is knowing how to utilise yes weapons yeah, definitely. that your enemy has yeah definitely definitely yeah I, 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 I'm and gonna, I say that unapologetically no no I'm, I'm going to add to what you're saying mm -hmm. there's a um Another side to that is, I, 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 I'm going to do it the long-winded way. <laughs> when I was 12, yeah, mm -hmm. um, my dad gave me a book called The Young Warriors. And um, in, uh, in the book, it's about a group of so-called maroons in Jamaica that are being taken through their manhood training, their warrior training. And um, at a point, there's a development towards a battle, yeah, with the Redcoats, the British, yeah? And so when they're preparing for the battle, one of the things that they've got to do is make bullets, yeah? And because they've got these guns, right, some of them they stole, you know what I'm saying, whatever, but now they've had to reverse engineer the art of making bullets, yeah, so that they can utilise these guns. So we don't just need to um, learn how to use guns and all kinds of weaponry, but we've got to develop young people that are scientifically astute enough in the engineering side of things, engineering sciences, to create weapons of self-defense. To make that Black Panther Wakanda, right. where we saw black excellence in technology and science, where they make out it's just fiction or comic tales, mm -hmm. a reality. Mm -hmm. Definitely, do you know what I'm saying? So, And the, the only reason why I'm saying that is because... Um, is because 
there there is science and craft behind the making of this weaponry. Yes. Is that, does that make sense? So it's not just a. So after that, we focus on what we see, the raw, the tragic, the end result. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You know? and yeah, death. and not even just that. It's, it's 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 even on the other side of it. We focus on the Black Panthers with them leather jacket and you know, you know what I'm saying. And they, they know their rights, which is all important. Yeah, but behind that, there's a system of technology and industry that creates those things. You see what I'm saying? And it applies to more than just guns, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that the, 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 the engineering skills that we can use to make weapons can be employed to make other things, yeah? To make car and computer, yeah? And all these things. Helicopter. And all these things, right? So I'm Drawn. saying that there's a, there's a, there's a, Marcus Mazzai Garvey again said it, you know, the nation, the, the, the battles of the future, he said, yeah? Whether they be mental or physical, will be won by the nation who has the greatest command of science. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, so that philosophies and opinions. So we've got to develop a scientific mentality is the point I'm trying to make. And that shouldn't be difficult for us considering the inventions uh, by black people, considering that we gave the world medicine, science, our kind of different thing. astronomy, solar yeah, biology. Definitely. Yeah, so it's within our DNA makeup. It's so much within our DNA uh -huh. that after they enslaved us Come on. and we were so called liberated, or we liberated, we, 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 we killed them to the point where they had to stop this thing. If, look at the amount of things that black people invented, particularly Africans in the United States of America, just out of slavery, can't read, can't write, the majority of us, right? You know what I'm saying? Illiterate people that had no education, the, the, the industrial revolution would not have been possible they came if out it had of not been. With right. all the skills, this is how uh, Tulsa, mm -hmm. uh, Black Wall Street came about, yep. etc. Yep. And it took um, the Caucasian 20 odd years to realise. Hold on a second, they got all the skills. Mm -hmm. We're going to be at the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, why it ended up being destroyed. Definitely. Yeah, with the first air raid. Which which brings me back to Wiley. Um, and we know Wiley, like, you know, people have a love-hate relationship with Wiley, yeah? Because, <laughs> you know, his Twitter fingers are a lot. And sometimes it sounds like he's just getting that man for no reason. And there are many things to criticise in some of the things that Wiley says. However, for over a year now, He's been talking about controlling our culture, yeah, ownership, development, um, and 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 having a command over how the culture develops. And it's very important, yeah? especially the entertainment industry. When we look at the trillions, we can't even say billions. Not just the trillions, the billions, but the impact it has. Black youth music culture mm -hmm. is the most popular in the world. The Definitely. impact it has mm -hmm. in sport on mm -hmm. the footballers mm -hmm. or the, um, the uh, cricketers, mm -hmm. GP, uh, the impact that it has on comedy, the impact. Mm -hmm. Our music mm -hmm. yeah, is a multi-trillion dollar mm -hmm. industry yes. which can lift mm -hmm. us out of Serious. this third world status Serious. that we have. So for somebody like mm -hmm. the godfather of grime, Wiley, mm -hmm. at his age, mm -hmm. when we consider what Sam Cooke went through, mm -hmm. when we consider what uh, TLC went through, mm -hmm. when we consider what mm -hmm. uh, Michael Jackson went through, when we consider what Prince went through, and Peter they were Tosh. all very vocal, Peter mm -hmm. Tosh, and mm -hmm. it wasn't just black artists, mm -hmm. George Michael mm -hmm. as well was mm -hmm. protesting, mm -hmm. Madonna was protesting mm -hmm. at one time mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. about how the industry mm -hmm. treats them yes. as if they are slaves. Mm -hmm. Every musician right now, especially with the streaming services, mm -hmm. Spotify, Deezer, mm -hmm. you name it, ain't earning what they're meant to be earning. So to hear a young brother, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. as he says, it's not just recently. Mm -hmm. They're just highlighting that because he's dangerous. Mm -hmm. He's waking up too many people. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly says mm -hmm. he directly mm -hmm. challenged yeah challenged yeah. Uh, the state of israel Definitely. yeah by mm -hmm. questioning mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. the land which was given to them mm -hmm. uh through the british if mm -hmm. anybody don't know how the state of israel came into mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. it was given by the british and the, the balfour mm -hmm. declaration, uh, declaration. Mm -hmm. this was planned from uh, world war one mm -hmm. it came to fruition in mm -hmm. world war at the end of world war two mm -hmm. and uh, since then, mm -hmm. um, we've seen the whole world have issues in mm -hmm. regards to the uh, 
so-called Jewish involvement in the so-called Middle East. Mm -hmm. I use these terms lo loosely, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Just people are basically overstanding. Yes, but what we see happening is that that state of Israel, which was financed by yes. the Rothschild, yes. who have also had a big say in, let's be honest here, the governments of France, mm -hmm. the USA, mm -hmm. England, in fact, all European governments, all mm -hmm. world governments, mm -hmm. and some would say a very unhealthy influence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of the way the that the world perceives and mm -hmm. deals with mm -hmm. the state of Israel, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. which came into fruition in 1940. You know, mm -hmm. the first day they, their army was ready, they were ready to fire shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how organised mm -hmm. the Jewish community was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, though, it was, I'm going to say that's how, that's how organised the white community was because they were assisting heavily. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't Europeans, get into, yeah, I don't, French, you know what I'm saying, British, right? I don't, I don't get, yeah. I don't get into the, 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 this game about which one of them is controlling. They're all controlling. They, they're all in it. Just, mm -hmm. just what I'm saying, like, so it's not to me that that all that is 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 a, is a next thing because you know the the Rothschilds were in it and so was uh, the Windsor, the Windsors, yeah. right? Just what I'm saying, like, right? So to, like the difference between the two is what you know what I'm saying, like in, in reality, you know, you know what I'm saying? So uh, that, that, that's for me. Uh, airplane ride, exactly. Is the difference right? Exactly. So so in, in that respect, now when it comes to to, to Wiley, the, the 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 question that the music industry in this country has to make is whether or not Wiley has the cultural influence mm -hmm. to to impact the, this this genre of music that he by nine out of ten people will tell you he created it. That's correct. Yeah. Does he have the cultural influence to create uh, a new sensibility in the artist? And the culture itself, yeah, not just the artists, but the people that revolve around that culture in order to make it more grassroots than it is right about now. That's the calculation. Whether he does or not, they have to make sure that he doesn't. Does that make sense? Yes. They have to make sure that this old, this old guy, <laughs> yeah, doesn't have the cultural gravitas, yeah, <laughs> to command the artists of his generation to become the moguls, as, he's, as, as he puts it, yeah, um, of the culture, to become the arbiters of the culture. Yeah, they have to ensure. And so I think they've been trying to do that. And I think now they've got a real excuse, yeah, to do it. And I think that's, that is the primary, so that's primary the, issue. So the, the hidden factor, what a lot of people don't see, is the, as you say, the hidden power struggles mm -hmm. that we see. Go on behind the scenes. Of, that go on and he's an open guy. On the street. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, he's an he's open, open guy. He'll tell you, look, back in the day, we all went for the money, mate. Yeah? He'll tell you, at a certain point, Grime went to this, and it's all because all of us saw the big pound signs and we went down all that particular black road. Music has done that. The all music of it. has done that. All the of reggae us. music has done yeah. that. Calypso Soka has done that. Right. Afrobeat is now capitalizing on that. Yeah. Yeah. Grime did that. Yep. Garage did that. That's a broke up garage. Jungle did that. Yep. All black people. As soon yep. as uh, the uh, other races come jangling with the big check, mm -hmm. so, no, you lot can't help me no more. Right. This is, this is it. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? The only thing is that, that we've got an artist now who's prepared to be very self reflective and say, we don't need them. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not saying he's making any big revolutionary statement, but he's saying enough, yeah. That it might concern some people if enough As people are acting. As say, he has them shook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it there. <laughs> we could we could go on for uh, at least another yeah, hour. You know. Know. <laughs> I'm sure people will be listening. Please feel free to leave your comments uh, in the comment section down below. Yeah, and we will be replying to uh, all the trolls and uh, all those who seem to like to want to jump onto a. Uh, African liberation conscious platform like Got Kush TV. Yeah, there's so many other platforms out there, but we seem to get so many interested in our uh, conversations, in our um, programs. You seem to have a lot of say in regards to uh, Black Lives Mattering and the African liberation struggle and our call for reparations. There's a whole heap of other races who like to uh, come onto Got Kush TV and to. Uh, try and troll us and give a stick but feel free to leave your comments down below